gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, somebody better play on them guitar strings, because I've been thinking about my favorite songs, Leila James, and what she's trying to talk to y'all about is music, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, have you heard of the Laham Act? The Lamb Act? Oh, that's a lame act, y'all. It's just lame. Um, lamb Act, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all need to understand something about this wonderful little act of Congress. Congress said, hey, there's this ruling by the Supreme Court which says the government cannot maintain its sovereignty. Pay attention. Government cannot maintain its sovereignty. Now, these acts are for false advertisement and all that stuff. Competitors, you know, trying to run other competitors out of business. If you got a competitor that's trying to cause you problems, you go into the LAM Act and you take care of that competitor. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we have that is because it is. This is a case. Let me show you what this case by the Supreme Court has stated. Because the government engaged in commercial business activity. Now, what the reason why I say the Supreme Court has stated, because we were showing you the Supreme Court case that came right after the Lamb Act information. Okay? Now, here's the problem. Here's the case right here. Uh, Terminal Railroad Company. Oh, man, that's just the Terminal Railroad, y'all. Y'all need to stay away from them Terminal Railroads. And elliptical opinion, elliptical, that makes no sense, that stands at the nadar of our waiver and for the matter of sovereign immunity jurisprudence in pardon, we permitted employees of the railroad owned and operated by Alabama to bring an action under the federal employees Liability Act, Federal Employees Liability Act against their employer, despite the absence of any provision in statute specifically referring to the states, we held that the act authorizes suits against the states by virtue of the general provision subjecting to suit every common carrier by railroad engaged in commerce between the several states. We further held that Alabama waived its immunity under the Federal Employee Liability Act suit, even though Alabama law, blah, 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 let's go, expressly disavows such waiver. So in this case, the Supreme Court held in 1940, but they changed their minds, y'all. They, ch they change their mind. In 1940, they say, oh, they can't they can't do it. They can't engage in commerce and then maintain their sovereignty. Well, holding that the state cannot impliedly waive its sovereign immunity by engaging in interstate commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, actually they can because that is an international law. That is the law of nations. That's not the law that the United States gets to interfere with. The United States cannot change the law of nations, ladies and gentlemen. Do, do you guys understand that? Why, why that's the case? Why the United States cannot change international law? Because it's one nation. It doesn't have the authority to change international law. That's the same as Russia can't change international law, nor can China, nor can Britain, nor can France, nor can Spain. No one nation can change international law see the world is not ruled by empires anymore an empire can change international law because an empire like british empire when it did control the so-called seven seas it could set the standard or the law but once we started having nations and kingdoms and governments all existing at the same time there is no more one nation ruling overall. 
and because of that, they can't do that. They've been trying. Ladies and gentlemen, they have been trying to change laws. They've been trying to reset the standard. Congress does not have that authority. Go ahead. Look at the Constitution and see where did Congress get the authority to change international law. Oh, I'm sorry. By the way, the fact that nations and governments cannot engage in commerce or commercial activities is because it violates common law. What do you mean it violates common law? Well, the nations are established to benefit their subjects, their citizens, their people. Well, when you engage in commerce, since the prices of commerce fluctuate, go ahead, anybody who's involved in trading, Bitcoin, or any of these other commodities, you notice that the price fluctuates. Well, because the price fluctuates, then when you get involved in that, you are now taking a risk or a gamble. That's what a gamble is. It means to take a risk. Well, what government has the authority to take a risk with their people's monies? That's why for government to do so, it doesn't do so in its sovereign capacity because the people never gave it authority to do so. Well, in Iceland they did. No, in Iceland the government wasn't acting as sovereign. It was acting as a private industry, which is why nobody could sue the government because those industries agreed to that. They thought because the bank sold them on the deal, that it was going to be to their benefit. Now, let's continue because this video isn't about this case law right here. What the question that we put in, uh oh, sorry, it's all about capacity. The United States cannot engage in commerce and still maintain sovereignty. See, here's what they did they said, well, they can do it under these circumstances, they can do it under that circumstances. Go back and look at the case law prior. To Congress coming up with some stupid act. Okay? And when I say some stupid act, watch this. Now, you see, these are keyword searches. We're going to do the actual search under the parallel search where it actually gives me what I'm looking for. The United States operating the canal is performing a governmental exercise of the power of Congress to regulate commerce. It is not performing a purely proprietary or business activity for government. Look at that. They said because Congress gave them permission. No, the Panama Canal was not a government exercise because guess what? Panama is not owned by the... Well, it used to be. Nope. Sorry, that canal was for business purposes. That's why they charge people duties under the treaty that's a commercial venture don't don't ask me go back and look at the law look at that overruled on other grounds okay overruled who are you overruling the second circuit that's who the supreme court was overruling because why their job is to try to protect the enterprise Allowing Congress to regulate states and their capacities as sovereign governments under the guise of commerce power would impair the state's ability to function effectively in a federal system. That's a lie. Congress regulates commerce on state level and federal level. Why? Because the Constitution held that only Congress could regulate commerce. The Constitution also allowed the states to exercise their own power, dominion, and domain, which is why they set up their own Congresses to regulate commerce in their state. But once they choose to do business outside the state, pay attention, then they fall under federal jurisdiction. That's why it's called interstate commerce. In other words, the government of the United States cannot regulate business, but only commerce. Uh-oh, the government of the United States cannot regulate business, but only commerce. That was 1935. Do you see how quickly things change? 
Now the government regulates businesses as well as commerce. Interesting, huh? Federal government in this case is engaged in the enterprise beyond granted or incidental power under the federal constitution. And therefore, a conflict of sovereignty between the federal government and the state is not an issue. Excuse me? Wow! You know, I've been down so many times and been through so many changes in my lifetime. Oh, I've been, been, been real, real high, and, and well, I didn't need anyone. This is Just To Be Close To You. It was one of my favorite songs by the Commodores. Technically, it still is, but it's one of those, it brings back memories of someone that I cared about. And so, so much value. I, I've always loved that, so much value. Okay, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, please understand, as to the nature of the state of Ohio and its forced political and legal mandates under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, it and its agencies can only regulate its citizens of the United States. Excuse me, the government can regulate the citizens of the United States? Of course they can, because these citizens are law of persons. Go ahead, pay attention. The General Assembly de facto, such being foreign entities under the body of law of persons. Now, I don't believe this is the court saying that. I believe this is a person saying that. Because this is the state versus Riney. I, I know it's probably Rennie, but Riney. Because if it was Rennie, it would be E. Okay, so I do believe the statement that I was just reading... We'll be alone, just you and me, yeah. And because he's a defendant, I could see him saying that. I don't think that's the state saying that. Uh, assignment of error number one. So this is that individual. Thus, the brief also does not comply with the federal rules. Ladies and gentlemen, your response to the, com the court, you don't have to comply with those stupid rules when you write a brief. You are. You do not have to comply with their stupid rules when you write a brief. Why is this? Because you are not a lawyer. Those rules and policies and procedures are written for officers of the court. They're not written for the common person. But yes, I knew this was written by the common person. And he won't know how to argue that. The state urges that the appellant did not contest that his driver's license was expired and that he operated a vehicle with expired tags on the road of the village of Carl on Carlton Carrollton excuse me ladies and gentlemen don't know why I was thinking of Carlton from Fresh Prince anyway ladies and gentlemen can I show you something you guys mind if I show you something that you probably didn't know and should know? That he operated a motor vehicle. Stop operating motor vehicles, people. Get yourself a ID so that you're no longer licensed to operate a motor vehicle. And start driving. Don't travel. Start driving. See, it's an operator's license. Pay attention. Read it. It's an operator's license. So stop operating vehicles and start driving and start saying, hey, sorry, I'm not committing any law breakage because I am not traveling in commerce. I am operating under my private capacity as a private citizen. So if you have a law that can regulate me as a private citizen when I am traveling on this highway, exercising my free right, man, show it to me, and then we ain't got no problem. Look, he did all of this bona fide contract stuff, did all of this arguing stuff. Stop arguing with them, people. Okay, let me tell you while I did this video so that you guys will understand. Here we go. I can get rid of all of this because that was the stuff that led to the stuff. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the document is finally finished. It'll pop up in a second, but while that's popping up, we're gonna go here. Sugar, sugar, yeah, 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 yeah! Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah! Sorry, it's my song. It's just to be close to you by the Commandors, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, we started off with this. I want to hear you say. Ladies and gentlemen, we started out with this document on a judicial complaint. This was the original document. The only thing I came in was I changed some words because originally it was judicial, off, judicial misconduct and disability form, okay? Now, you must understand, this is an administrative process. I added all of this presentment as properly titled as judges are said to be officers of the court. So that's why we're bringing it against officers of the court. Okay, we went to answering the questions who, what, when, where, and how throughout the complaint. Okay, a whole lot of changes. Now, we took this document, and this document became this document. Whew! Big difference, ain't it? criminal complaint in the form of a petition for redress to be filed on demand. I'm going to take this statement here. I like the statement. That's why I put it at the top. Copy. The only problem is we had this document, but as I said, this is a 16-page document, and we weren't even finished. We had more to add, and then we were going to delete stuff and rearrange it and reorganize it, but then... It just didn't feel right. You know what I'm saying? And so I said, okay, what do I need to do? How do I make a document where they will have no other choice but to pay attention? All right. We end up with the present document. There is our file on demand. And what I'm going to do is right here. I just realized text box. We'll put it right here at this line. V, and then I'm going to go here, and then back here, and then we're going to take it, and we're going to stretch it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that. We're just going to do a petition for redress. Okay, now, no, I didn't want to do that, undo that, okay, I did it again, I got to stop that, I know how to undo it, so we undid that, now I go here, and I'm going to go here, no, don't want that, don't want that. Don't want that. Go back here. We're going to go to the middle. All right. Because we already have file on demand, there is no reason for us to have it again. You know, there there is no reason for us to do file on demand again. So we leave it that way. Criminal complaint in the form of a petition for redress of grievance. You have the right to file a criminal complaint. You guys must understand that. But who are you filing your complaint with? Well, if you understand, as I did on a video yesterday, Miss Persian of Felony, Title 18, sec Section 4, that's where it's codified at. But Miss Persian of Felony was originally part of the code, had its own little section before Title 18 was come, came up with. It's whoever has knowledge of a crime must report it. See something, say something. Must report it. Do you know that if you witness a crime and you fail to report it, you could be charged? That it is against the law to see a crime being committed and knowingly remain silent. Yes, the law says that everybody has to be snitches. Now, uh, wait, hold on. Don't misunderstand. They ain't did nothing wrong when they came up with that. Because it's not their invention. The scriptures originally was written in such a way. 
Pay attention. Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, you see this right here? This is a stamp. <laughs> and I canceled it. Okay, by putting a canceled stamp on it. Anyway, the section for your name, there's enough space for you to put your name. The section for your address, there's more than enough space for you to put your address. Okay? Now, we're going to go through the next email section. Name of the court officer who violated your rights, enough space to put their name. Name of the court officer, third party, if you need more space, add it to the form. There's enough space to put all the case numbers in the world because for some people, they have gone after them 5, or 6, 12, 15, 100 times. Enough space to add that information. Now, the next page. Did the incident involve the loss of, select all that applies, as a result of misconduct, a failure to act, or, and or from actions of any of the above parties? And here, guess what? Click, click, click. Uh-oh, I'm in the wrong one. Whew, all right. Click, uh-oh, it ain't clicking. Man, it's something ain't clicking. Hold on, let me see if I do it that way. The checkbox isn't going in there. Now, the checkbox does go in there. I've already checked it out earlier. So, the checkbox will go in there. But the fact that it's not going in now, something ain't right. And I will check it out. And I will make sure that the checkbox goes where it goes. Yeah, because that's the, that's the one that I was checking before. So, we should be able to check. Just like I'm able to type in here. We should be able to check the box. Of each but the checks box does work so the year that it occurred we started with 2011 originally we we're gonna do 2019 but we do realize that a lot of people have been going through things since 2011 with them and they've been really making things difficult now there are a lot of statements because you have to make a statement what I and the other members of the public believe one I believe that a judge purportedly acting under the color of statute, rule, code, regulation, ordinance, law has committed and or attempting to commit misconduct or has a disability. And I choose to file a formal civil rights complaint about it with this agency office because this complaint may be against a judicial officer. Hold on. Come on now. I got to... Oh, you know what? It probably won't let me edit. So we got to go to text. Nope. Won't let me do it that way. Dag nabbit. It probably won't let me edit that. Because I don't want just civil rights. Oh, well. It says... No, you can't edit it because we already saved it that way. All right. Yeah, I, I guess it's all right. It's all right, y'all. I guess it's all right. So, because we already have criminal complaint up top, so it won't kill the document or the meaning of it. Um, because the complaint is against a judicial officer and or a judicial officer... A judicial officer is involved this complaint is being sent to the clerk's office of the United States Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit at Washington DC this is one of the places you're gonna send the complaint now you guys need to pay attention many of you guys are gonna get the complaint back saying there's nothing there can do they're not gonna do anything you want that so let them send it back to you do not worry we'll talk about what to do about that when the time comes so you'll be hearing about it later in this video and later in other videos what to do when they ignore your right to petition government for redress of grievance we'll get there as of yet this complaint is not against a judge of the united states court of appeals for the federal circuit however if there is noted interference and or presumed conflict of interest and or conspiratorial conduct this complaint shall be filed with the circuit executives of the court for administrative redress the aforementioned federal circuit court of appeals 
is to sit as an Article Three judge. And if this complaint is against a United States Circuit judge or against a judge of a national court, the Court of the International Trade or the Court of Federal Claims, the court is empowered under the aforementioned jurisdiction to extend authority, aforementioned authority, Article 3, to a proper jurisdiction, deputizing said officer to possess or process the matter accordingly, to possess that judicial power. Now, please note that I am not aware of all of your rules. However, I am aware of the following, that the court has its bar and that these officers are possibly registered under this bar. Either way, as officers of the court, they are the court's responsibility, whether they be police officers or attorneys or clerk deputies. As the former group our executive branch jurisdiction, and yet somehow the court has sidestepped the separation of powers prohibitions and united with the executive branch against the people. And when the members of the people and or the public claim in a jury, the matter must be given due attention and no government agent, quasi-corporation, officer, official, and or representative, and or public servant has immunity in such circumstances, at least... That is the alleged intent of the people who, in, who ordained government. Uh, the or, when ordaining government, was it not? That was the intent of the people. Ladies and gentlemen, this section right here, you can fill in whatever you need to do. If you want to highlight a case law saying that, you can add it. Left that section there for you, okay? Please indicate the following statements apply and check indicate which of the following statements apply and check the box that best reflect your opinion of the application of the associated law. If you need to check multiple boxes, print and fill in manually because this will not let you check each box. Okay? So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to manually fill it in once you print it. Okay? And if all of the boxes apply, then you just be manually just selecting all the boxes. Okay? Let me give you some of the questions. We're going to start here. Were there peace and or police officers involved? Were tax revenues involved? The public servants are funded by taxpayers, which establishes a special contractual relationship as rendered by the Supreme Court in Gonzalez versus Castle Rock. Forgot the parentheses, but we're going to leave it the way it is. If there was loss of liberty, meaning somebody incarcerated you, arrested you, held you without your consent, without documentation of a valid law being broken, and you feel that you were denied access to due process guaranteed, uh, to a due process guaranteed, such as the right to be heard, or the right to counsel of choice, or the right to be subject, uh, not to be subjected to excessive bills, or and or penalty please indicate by checking each of the boxes that apply in this section was a search warrant involved and or arrest warrant involved in the situation please indicate by checking the appropriate box what all of you don't know i just spoke with a gentleman this morning they raided his house over 20 agents raided his house held them at machine gunpoint, not just regular gunpoint, machine gunpoint for a tax issue. Hold on now. They did a no-knock warrant for a tax issue. Ladies and gentlemen, they're calling you all sovereign citizens. I haven't even showed you how the... Internal Revenue Service has archived the sovereign citizen information. They took it off their website. They put it in their archive section. They document that the information is not being updated and it is archived. Why? Because they were violating people's rights by labeling them. The FBI does not get to label people terrorists. They don't have any authority for creating a new law. Go ahead. Go ahead and check 
check to see where the FBI got the authority or the DOJ got the authority to create law. But because you all are citizens of the United States, as we just read, that's where they get the authority to regulate you. You don't believe me. That's all this is about is regulations. Regulating people. That's all they are doing. You really must get that. As a matter of fact, no. Go back to the beginning of the video when I read that about that state regulating people of the United States. And it mentioned the 14th Amendment when it talked about regulating people. Don't worry about it. We cover that in this. So I need you guys to focus with me. Nature and statement of a valid claim and complaint. This is also to serve as an indefinite notice of non-appearance. Just do that when you put stuff in the court for the first time. This is to serve as an indefinite notice of non-appearance. Let them know that you are not appearing. Now here's one case. A properly presented claim must identify the claimants and sufficiently describe the nature of the claims. Okay, so if you're going to properly present a claim, you have to identify the parties, which is what we did. You have to identify the claimants, which is what we did. And we're describing the nature of the claim, which is what we're doing. It is true, it has been held, that a claim filed uh, to be valid needs no, not state the amount of the claim, which we don't. If the claim recites the nature of the claim and its extent, the rule is stated. The claim must identify the message, state the negligence complained of, and the nature and extent of the damages sustained. That's what we're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, the very same thing here as before. You will select which box applies. One of the questions here, as all are aware that all public officials are deemed to know the law, because ignorance of law is inexcusable. Ladies and gentlemen, all public officials are deemed to know the law. So don't let the police tell you, well, I don't know the law. Don't let them tell you that because ignorance of law, there is no excuse for that. It is your belief, or is it your belief, that the aforementioned individuals, the ones you've listed, not only had knowledge of the law, but made a, it's supposed to be deliberate, so I'll have to change this. Deliberate choice and or decision to violate the law in order to deprive you of an inalienable and secured Bill of Rights? If the answer to this question is in the affirmative, please complete the following section. Okay, now, as it is against the law for anyone acting under color of law or authority of law, to, and it's supposed to be deprived. And the problem, let me show you why those mistakes are there. Uh-oh. It. Give me a second. I'll show you why those mistakes are there. And there may be a way to enlarge it, and I'll have to work on it now, so it looks like I'll be another hour or so working on this. And the video won't be another hour or so, but I'll be another hour or so collect, correcting those um, errors. And I did have a way of correcting it, and I thought I did go back and do most of the spell checks and all of that stuff. But I'll show it to you now, and then you'll understand. My hope is that you'll understand. Because we're creating a PDF, and in creating the PDF, we want to create the form a certain way. So, be just one second. Now, here's the thing. This document doesn't threaten anybody. It doesn't threaten that you're going to do this or do that other than file a complaint. That's all you're doing. You're not threatening nobody's livelihood. Okay? It's not what we do. It's not what we do. Not even in the slightest. All right. So when that pulls up, I'll show you guys why that is. Why that the spelling of this is the headache. Now, see, what happens is this is not an editable form. I cannot edit it. Now, I can make it to where I can edit it, but that won't do because we're getting ready to post this form up, and I will tell you where it will be. As a matter of fact, 
we're going to create a whole new folder so you'll be able to find the folder it'll be under uh, as a matter of fact the title of this is judicial alleged criminal complaint judicial alleged criminal complaint is what we're going to call the folder we put this section here the terms misconduct and disability as used in this complaint process are defined by law misconduct is conduct prejudicial to the effective and expeditious administration of the business of the court and the upholding of the sanctity and obligations of the bill of rights as prescribed by the bill of o uh, the bill of oath the oath of office for the appointed court official this complaint does not presume to be administrative in nature as the office of the judgeship is not an administrative one but a constitutionally sanctioned judicial office by way of the constitutional process and appointment each judicial officer who takes the oath of office remain under their obligation of uh, and I, you know what I already got rid of this of vital junk as stipulated in the Constitution of the United States as ordained by the Bill of Rights thus when a judicial officer violates their oath of office they are subject to the same penalties as outlined in the Fifth Amendment of the Bill of Rights even though an indictment and or information as such an act um, even through an indictment or information of such an act when coupled with the denial of depriving of an American citizen a right secured by the Bill of Rights of the Constitution is a crime one that is punishable under law this means that a special prosecutor and our venue is necessary upon proof of claim this section is the same thing asking similar questions and documenting similar things Please help us to understand more about your complaint by completing this explanation section. You may give details on a separate form and or sheet if you choose. Please be as specific as possible and explain who, what, when, where, and hows, and why you believe the conduct is criminal, and what rights of yours is secured by the Bill of Rights were, uh, as secured by the Bill of Rights were violated. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why that says what it says, we'll get to it in a second. What I know is that as a natural person, I have the right to life, to the free exercise and enjoyment thereof. And these officers and their co-conspirators have interfered with those rights, and I must object. There is a maxim, and it holds that no one is above the law. So why is it that this body has sat back and allowed the rights of citizens of the state whom we a collective group is supposed to be as a collective group collectively formed the United States of America to have these honorable natural persons be deprived of their recognized secured right I am aware that nowhere in the Bill of Rights references referencing a citizen is what reference to the respective rights reserved and whenever the bill of rights this is what it's saying whenever the bill of rights reference a citizen it is reference to the rights being reserved and retained by the states and the citizens thereof not benefits and or privileges i am a citizen of the state i am not a coin of art a term of art a phrase and or a contrivance of man i am a natural person i am a state citizen possessive of natural rights and those rights secured by my state's constitution of which Congress has had no authority to interfere with these retained as well as reserved rights as secured by the ninth and 10th section. Yeah, and 10th got to be separated. Like I said, I'll take care of it. Of the United States Bill of Rights, at least that was the intent of and or will of the people as documented in law. So you have statements like that that are put throughout so that there is no misunderstanding. Please help us to understand more about your complaint. You have this section. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is a 9 point and not 12 point so that you have more space to write so that you don't have to add other pages because you have at least two and a half pages where you get to put in what went on because this document pretty much covers everything else you only get to highlight the who what where when and hows 
and then we add it sorry see this one lets me edit this box but because when I saved it I edited the other box that was it's already locked in stone and when I save it this time this is gonna be locked in what do you believe are your secured rights you're gonna list the Bill of Rights do you believe that the Bill of Rights apply to you you're gonna explain that are you a citizen of one of the states of the United States you're gonna explain that this is that section just gonna answer those simple questions you can do it in uh, outline form one two three four just that simple okay now if you need to add any extra information we put this here this is just a nice little paragraph where you just go ahead and add in it's a text box watch this see you go ahead and add your information in all right now we get into the bottom now we we made it to the top now we're going to the bottom that's page 10 so because that's page 10 we can go to page 12 I do hereby acknowledge the following facts as evidence and supported by any conclusions and or presumptions and or assumptions and or allegations specified herein each of the following links are directly and specifically associated with thousands of cases where the judicial branch of government has confirmed and or acknowledged my position judges are officers of an institution known as the court those are the cases the judges cannot violate the citizens constitutionally secured right now you see this has a link a hyperlink watch me click on it this lets me know that that hyperlink will work okay when you send this document to the idiots deprivation of rights under color of law is a crime conspiracy against rights is a crime denial of access to the court is a violation of a constitutionally secured right a crime a cognizable felony is a crime a felony is categorized as a high crime showed you that yesterday a judge can be charged with high crimes and misdemeanors the law requires that I bring forth the complaint to a magistrate or other official miss Persian a felony police officers have a duty to the public because they receive their salary from taxes paid by the public a creditor must show proof that it owns the debt for those of you who are dealing with evictions if they don't show proof they own the debt and the courts cannot just say well that's good enough no it's not what's good enough for what the judge says it's what's good enough for what the law says they must show proof of debt that's where the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act comes in. Presumption of law is not law. An oath to uphold the Constitution is a binding agreement. When they take an oath of office, they are signing a contract, ladies and gentlemen, a verbal contract. The right to petition for redress is a binding and valid right. That's why you labeled this a redress petition. If Congress receives a complaint alleging criminal conduct, of a judge it must investigate there must be some type of investigation because when you bring such a complaint you are bringing a complaint to the United States Congress referencing their constitutional authority given by the people a citizen has the right to file a criminal complaint we pulled those cases they're all there and because Miss Persian of felony says you must report it to an official in authority do you want your complaint to be forwarded to and what you do my suggestion click that one you click that one you click that one I don't know why they're not giving my check boxes today and it's something I did so I'll take care of that okay now did you know that it is a felony to make a false report and or a false claim yes you knew that I am aware that I do not have to provide proof of the law because ignorance of the law is no excuse they're already supposed to know the law I'm aware that I am a citizen of my state, which is part of the United States, and as such, my inalienable rights are secure by two separate constitutions. I am not attempting to cause anyone any harm and or injury. I am only attempting to get redress for the wrongs I claim have been done my person, property and or possessions. I am an adult, I am competent, and I am a natural living person. I am aware that even if I believe in something that nobody else believes, 
I can believe that there are aliens out there and they're coming to snatch me up tonight. I have the right to my beliefs and to practice my belief as I choose, so long as I do not infringe upon another's right. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all are free to believe whatever y'all want to believe. And many of y'all believe some, whoo-wee, some interesting stuff. But that's your right. You can call it your right to practice that religion. I bring forth a valid claim, not relying on any presumptions, but solely upon facts by which is this criminal complaint in the form of an affidavit. Because an affidavit can only be fact. I am aware that I have individuals who witnessed the events I describe herein. And so if you are aware of that, you will attach separate affidavits and such must be considered as evidence. So that's an instruction, so I'm going to have to take care of that instruction about the affidavits. I further am aware, and this talks about all the things you are aware, and then finally says, I do affirm, attest, as well as declare that the aforementioned, which is based on first-hand knowledge and or information, is wholly accurate and witnessed by and before God on this day of this presentment, and I do so by exercising my right to place, I mean, to practice religion of my choice under divine retribution, if otherwise. I bring forth this, my complaint, as stated, so help me God, and then you sign it. Just that simple. Now, it's not complicated, I promise. Pay attention. Do you see how small this is? Well, there is no way for me to make it larger. There is no pluses and minuses or anything. Take a look. That's all the options you get. Okay. Well, you can make it large. No, don't want to make it larger. That's not the point. Okay, sorry. Y'all just don't know. Y'all just don't know. Y'all just don't know. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save this and I'm going to work on it and I'm going to correct those issues because many of them I can correct here because this is the, uh, what do you call it? The baseline template. This is the thing that's going to let me correct. Watch this. See how I did that? And you see how it's still the same size? That's the problem. Okay, and it won't let me do nothing else. So I'm going to try, and we're going to see. Now, look at that. It won't let me do nothing. So I'm going to work with it. We're going to talk. I'm going to go back to finishing this up so I can get this up there for you guys. By the time this video is up, then this document will be finished because I won't post the video until the document is finished. Okay. This will be used for all of you who had any judicial issues where it isn't that the judge made a decision that you didn't appreciate. That's not what this is for. If the judge makes a decision you don't appreciate, live with it, Forrest. Live with it. This is not about a decision a judge made or may not have made or could have made or tried to make. This is, that's the relay, uh, the overlay that's causing that. Okay, I apologize, it's the video overlay. But if a judge makes a decision and you don't like that judge's decision, live with it, get over it, appeal the decision. But that's not a reason for you to be filing no complaint. The complaint is when they have violated one of your secured rights. Because deprivation of rights while acting under color of law is a crime. It's a federal crime in America, it's a felony. They're not allowed to violate your rights. So document your rights being violated. But documented people. Okay, let me tell you what their job was. Penny Mac and Plaza Mortgage decided to file these so-called frivolous lawsuits against SAA. And they tried to come after everybody. Neat thing is they tried to keep my name out of the petition. So every time I responded, the courts always found a way. We even, of course, we sent the certified mail. Of course, the court received. Of course, we sent payment. And every single time, our documents did not get filed. Don't worry about it. We keep records of this. This is what the courts have done. Because they know, as I've told all of you, anybody files a lawsuit against you, you always countersue. 
Well, I'm charging them with conspiracy because a judge does not have the authority to review an arbitration award after the expiration date. There is no law that permits them. There is no rule that permits them to review an arbitration award and or agreement and or contract after expiration. Been waiting on them to show us the case. But that case has to be backed by facts and conclusions of law. The Supreme Court has already made their decision on the matter. Congress has already stated their decision on the matter. The law already says what the deadlines are, what the limitations are. And they're making new rules for SAA. Because when you bring two claims against a company, you kill their insurance because the insurance companies cancels their business insurance and that's what penny max aim was and plaza mortgage aim ones penny mac has filed at least eight lawsuits against saa we still have lawsuits we're just now finding out about that i never knew about they never served me but my name is on the suit ladies and gentlemen y'all should know i don't run from any lawsuit you file a suit against me, you're going to get a counter complaint. You're going to get a counterclaim, and you're going to get a demand for a trial by jury under the Seventh Amendment. You're going to get that because that's my routine. I ain't changed. But what's happening is that the courts are ignoring things like that. So that's why this is being put together. The fact that they keep trying to interfere with my life by arresting me? For what reason? For what reason? Because they're not stating it. They're not documenting it. And then, oh, like in Puerto Rico, on their state level, just releasing me and dismissing everything and thinking it's okay. And when I filed an appeal, they blocked the appeal. Interesting, huh? When they put you through their system, they don't let you appeal it. I did the same thing here, California. They ignored my appeal claim. I never sent the paperwork in. It's a shame because I sent it in electronically. I have proof that I sent it in electronically. But on their end, because it's done through their system, they erased that proof. So I had to let them know, you better go back and take a look at the login. Because this is the day I sent it in. And here's your system showing me logging in three times that day and changing the password. I'm not going into your system for any other reason. I'm not checking anything else out. Go ahead and look at what my activity was. See, ladies and gentlemen. They think that I'm a novice. They don't see the critical thinking on everything. I look at every in, every out. Every time they come up with something, it is so juvenile. Every time they come up with an excuse, it is so juvenile. So I'm tired of the excuses. So the only thing that I know that I can do when it comes to their stupid excuses, watch this, hold on. Well, you know what? I can't do it that way because that would take too long. I'm going to do it this way. The only thing that I can do is I can bring a complaint against them. Not a misconduct complaint. I'm not reporting misconduct. Misconduct is very limited. But the criminal statute is not. Okay, Title 18 is the criminal code. It makes it illegal for individuals to do certain things. Which is why individuals get warrants from judges upon an affidavit and complaint ladies and gentlemen you have the right to petition the government for redress of grievance which is a criminal complaint you don't believe me go back and look at the word redress go back and look at the way the constitution is written how do you think a complaint is made it's a petition to government for a correction of wrong i told you if anybody's an expert on the word redress and the redress of grievance section of the constitution it is this man Richard Fuller, who first introduced that part of the Constitution to me because I had no idea it was there. Nobody had ever read it, ever said anything about it. Didn't even know what the word redress meant before 1998. But Richard Fuller, a literal rocket scientist, brought it to my attention. Richard has passed since, but Richard gets his credit because he says, I'm going to give this to you. He says, because I have a feeling you'll do something with it. You better believe I've been yelling and screaming that word redress and redress of grievance ever since. And many of you know that to be the truth. 
you have the right to file a criminal complaint. That's why when I understood the word and actually doing the research and looking at the Constitution for the state of Arizona and looking at the way their laws were, they have a law in their criminal code which allows a person to file a criminal complaint with a judge and or magistrate and or other person in authority. It's the misperson of felony statute written into every single criminal code. The police cannot make you file a complaint. You have to voluntarily file your complaint. Sorry, I got one other thing to do right here. See that C right there? I don't like the lowercase. Okay, yeah, we're going to... We're going to keep that C, you know, up there with the buddies up top. We're going to keep that C highlighted because it is a complaint and it is criminal that we are alleging. We're alleging crimes. It is an alleged judicial criminal conduct. We're not coming to no conclusions. Now, one final thing. One final thing. Uh, let's do this. C-O-M-M-E-R-C-I-A-L. L I E N. There you go. Commercial lien, a most potent weapon. Now, I want to show you something about this commercial lien. It's from the Freedom School. Freedom! Uh oh, I'm sorry. You know what? <laughs> I turned the volume down. My radio's been playing all this time in the background. I apologize. I, I don't do the commercial thing. I know you're saying we're so glad because we didn't get to hear any of that stuff and we got to just uh, blah blah whatever mother I'm sorry ladies and gentlemen I want you to sh I want to show you something these individuals who have been publishing this pay attention 1995 now this was 1995 that wasn't just the beginning it was the beginning because remember pay attention 1996 1997 1998 Clinton was in office. Second term started in 1996. Clinton was in office. This is the A for V beginning process. Why? Because I actually participated in it after the fact. I got involved in this in 1999. Okay? Doing the commercial lien thing and everything. Still got the paperwork. Okay? Put everything online too. What I want you guys to understand commercial affidavit process this is where we're going so we're gonna do control F and then we're gonna put a F F a sorry what am I doing yeah that's why I messed up I D A V I T sorry tired very tired and I'm not tired as if I'm not getting any sleep because I actually slept pretty good last night matter of fact I had a dream that's the type of dream that I enjoy because this dream was nothing controlled by me or anything else. My dream involved characters. One being a radio. Hold on, Prince. Hey, Prince. If, if, if you worried about her being satisfied, then you go ahead and you talk to her while I put you on hold. All right. One of them being a radio producer, record producer, and he's behind the scenes. He's been around for a long time. But he's behind the scenes and the people he's around doesn't really know who he is or what he's done. Then you have another young man who used to be a part of a group. And what they were doing was they were singing songs that belong to another individual who is a producer who owns the rights to that song. So they worked out an agreement with this group and the group violated the agreement. And so they foreclosed on the agreement and now... The individual's destitute. And then you have another individual who's just sitting there watching all these people. And as he's asking questions, they now see what they all have in common. That they all are associated with the same thing. That small world thing where each one of them are tied to the other and they didn't even know that they were tied to the other. Somehow, some way. And then the dream ended. So I don't know how it ended. I don't know what, what happened to the people. I, that's how I write my stories, is because I have those type of dreams. Dreams that ain't got nothing to do with nothing that I'm doing, okay? And the interacting of the characters, I can't even perceive what the response or the answer would be 
Only the character can determine what the response to the answer would be. That's what I go to. Oh, look at that. Model criminal complaint. I wasn't even trying to do model criminal complaint. But like I told you, been doing this for a while. I didn't. I forgot this was even in here. Literally. And here the whole time I'm talking, I'm not even looking at the screen. That's a shame. I'm here talking to you all about a criminal complaint. Get off your anuses. Download a copy of the commercial lien process. A potent weapon from freedom hyphen school forward slash freedom hyphen school dot com excuse me forward slash commercial underscore liens with an s dot pdf i'll download it again i already have it uh we're gonna you know what i'm gonna do it like this i'm gonna do it this way so that you guys get this Ooh, copy now what we're gonna do is we're gonna save I'm going to put this up at the same time we put up the commercial complaint. Uh, the commercial complaint, sorry. The criminal complaint. Okay, because this document covers the commercial lien process. This is why they had to come up with the Prison Litigation Reform Act. The reason why they had to come up with that is because people were putting liens. They were putting liens on judicial officials. Now, hold on. The only way, according to the, it's called the Prison Litigation Reform Act, PLRA. The PLRA says that if you file a frivolous complaint against someone, you can go to jail. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why it's not frivolous is because you are doing it based upon actual events and your actual beliefs, which makes it not frivolous. You're covering all the aspects and all the points. That's what we're doing. Okay, watch this. Control F A F F I D A V I T. And we're just going to click on affidavit. Okay, commercial affidavit process. That's where we want to go, chapter two. So let's see if it's going to take us to chapter two. No, see, that should be a hyperlink, but it's not a hyperlink. So, sorry. And by the way, you see how many times affidavit is here? Look at that. Look how many times. That's a lot of affidavits, y'all. A lot of sworn affidavit. Diamond declared. Oh, Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, Diamond uh, declared that the document caused irreparable harm. Oh, this ain't the same Diamond. Oh, okay, sorry. No, there was a Diamond, an individual who brought, uh, who got himself out of jail, who did what I did. Okay? He did what I did. Pay attention, people. Mr. Diamond, not this diamond, a different diamond. He did what I did, going into jail trying to change the system. <coughs> they shot him up on the L.A. Um, Superior Court steps. Okay, you guys remember Nelson Starr, don't you? You remember Kenneth Starr? You guys remember... I promise you, if you go over this, you're going to remember some of these things actually happening. Okay. Filing of this type of lien is a direct attack on the judicial system and on general reputations of those named in the lien. It may negatively impact on the financial credit rating of those individuals. It will probably be a negative impact on their willingness to continue to serve as representatives of the United States and it will constitute an abuse of civil process that cannot adequately be remedied at law okay I do appreciate them bringing this point out in plain English Diamond did not like the lien but couldn't find a way to extinguish it further he seems to say that these liens could drive public officials right out of office we are not trying to drive public officials right out of office. Ladies and gentlemen, we need public officials in office. Seriously, I'm not joking. This is not a, this is not a play on words. This is not me making up something. The scriptures speak of them in their relative positions for a reason. But they're in their relative position. And in that position, he has given them no authority to abuse you, to abuse your rights. They created a contract known as the Constitution. The authority was created for them to follow 
the law that everybody agreed is the law. Not the law that they agreed is the law. Congress does not get to make a law that impacts you because Congress gets their authority to make law from you. Okay, that's where the authority comes from. Although this lean strategy is explosive, it's more like nitroglycerin than hydrogen bombs. You need to be knowledgeable and careful to use nitroglycerin. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to go over this carefully. <coughs> See, a few careless pro se's have had their liens blown up in their faces. You're not doing this to be placing liens on anybody. Okay? You're not, you're not doing this to place liens on officials. You're doing this to file your complaint. You must document the complaint first. You must send it to all of the agencies listed. Even though you're asking for it to be forwarded, you're going to send it to all of those agencies so that you put your claims on the record okay you're gonna go over this document you're gonna go over it not once you're not gonna go over it twice you're gonna go over it several times pay attention ladies and gentlemen and I'm not talking about this Christian thing I, I don't like it when they do that because this ain't got nothing to do with being a Christian Okay, this is a commercial system. Ain't got nothing to do with being no Christian. Commercial affidavit process, or CAP, is perhaps one of the most powerful devices available for the common man. Okay, however, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm showing you this section is because this section deals with one thing. This section deals with one thing, affidavits. You know, I'm going to read this section right here because I'm interested. Our founding fathers believed that it is it was self-evident that the God of nature is the sovereign of the universe. So that's why you can't be sovereign because you will be in competition with him and everything in it as well as mankind. And that he has endowed all of mankind with certain inalienable rights, making them self-directing sovereigns. No, you do have the right to govern yourself. You do. But in the United States, what the people did is they came together and they said, we're going to create these substantive laws to govern us. Now let's understand, let's find out what the common law is. They further convince that God's temporal laws for mankind are expressed in the law of the land. Common law is common sense law. Do to your neighbors as you want your neighbors to do to them. Common law was never that of England. England was never a common law country. Go back and look, they were a monarchy. I'm sorry. Monarchy, no, monarchy, meaning they were ruled by a king. No such thing as common law of England. Do not let them mislead you like that. All of these courts keep talking about the common law of England. Everybody knows that England had a king. And now it has a queen. There is no common law of England. Never was. There was no common law of Rome. Rome. A common law? Y'all gotta be kidding me. England nor Rome had a common law. Rome had an emperor. Do you understand what the common law is? You keep hearing people say the common law of the people. Okay? Common law was never England or Rome. Common law comes from the fundamental laws of the Ten Commandments. The, the starter law. They, there were 613 laws given to the Jews. Deuteronomy, second law, Leviticus, book of law. That's why you got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Leviticus comes before Deuteronomy. That's why Deuteronomy is Deuteronomy, second law. Okay, the ten, the ten laws, the ten so-called commandments, those were starter commandments written on tablets. With the finger of God. Hey, this is something you probably didn't even know. Did you see Moses showed anger three times in his life that's documented in scripture? With the Egyptian that he killed to save the life of another Hebrew. Then when he sat up there and threw those tablets to the ground because he was frustrated. And when he struck that rock. Here now you rebels. Shall we cause water to come forth through this rock? Okay. 
Three times he expressed anger. Scripture says he was the meekest person of all those on earth. Ain't that interesting? Now here's the interesting, interesting, interesting part. Moses threw the tablets to the ground. They were written on by God's hand. And he threw them to the ground. Interesting, ain't it? And notice, if you think that that did not go unnoticed, he told Moses, come over to the tent of meeting where I will give you the law that was written on the tablet that you destroyed. He highlighted the fact that Moses had destroyed that. All right, getting back to, again, that was the common law. That's why you have common law marriage. How is common law marriage done? Pay attention. The same way they did it in scripture. The woman, somebody did speak about Ruth when I raised the questions about the scriptures the other day. Somebody spoke about Ruth and Boaz. Look, Ruth and Boaz, that was brother-in-law marriage. And he was the closest relative, but not the closest, closest relative. That's why he told Ruth, you stay here. Keep this to yourself. Do not tell it to anybody. We're not doing anything tonight. He says, but there was somebody who's more of a closer relative than I am. And so on and so forth. She told Naomi. Naomi said, hey, whatever that man then told you, you best believe he will take care of business by the end of this day. And by the end of that day, it was taken care of. But he covered her feet, not with a tent, but with the covering for which he was covered. Because it says she uncovered his feet. Pay attention. I'm sorry. There are a lot of people who refer to scripture. When I say, again, I love law. I love scripture. I promise you, go and do your research. Common law marriage was like Joseph and Mary. Where the groom and the bride slept in the same tent and or room and or home. That's how they performed marriage. And they slept there without a chaperone in the same bed. That was how common law marriages were done. I.e. common law. It had nothing to do with Rome. It had nothing to do with England. So please stop thinking it's British common law. Common law is scripture. That's why they're trying to get rid of the common law. Because they can't handle it. Because they can't operate the way they do. Common law does not allow you to charge your brother interest. Go back and take a look. Common law allows you to charge a foreigner interest, but not your brother. I know, I know, I'm going to spark a whole lot of conversation about this, but this video ain't about that, ladies and gentlemen. This video is about us. And if you hear me breathe in like that, that is from time to time, especially since COVID, um, there is an issue with breathing. So I have to take certain deeper breaths at times. It is not a problem. Doesn't cause any stress or distress or anything. It's just I catch wind of it. Oh, did you use a pun? You said you catch wind and you were talking about breathing. Oh, you are such a funny idiot. Oh, God, you're such a... Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this video is about filing a complaint against wayward officials, officials who are not carrying out their mandate. Remember, they're in their relative positions as ordained by whom? Not by the Constitution. Hold on. No, because y'all are not paying attention. This is all I'm doing. I am not doing anything other than Romans the 13th chapter. Okay? Now, I used to watch our library because it's on my system. I don't have to go to Google because Google... Oh, God. I have somebody who uses... Um, what's that woman's name? Alexa? She uses that character and asks that character for certain things. I'm like, wait a minute. What's she say? Wait a minute. It don't say that. When coming to, when it talks about scripture, uh, very wrong most of the time. That don't make no sense. See? And Jehovah spoke to Moses face to face, just as one would speak to a man. Okay. Uh, I believe this is a time when Miriam and Aaron, no, that was in Numbers. So this is a time when they're actually speaking. Let me see. Hold on. Yes, okay. That was when he went up to the mountain the first time and asked to see God. And he allowed him to pass and he declared who he was. Okay, however, this, I was just listening to 
a drama yesterday about Miriam and Aaron, and he says, How dare you speak against Moses, my servant, whom I speak not by riddles or by, uh, I forgot what the other word he used, but face to face I have come to know him. Da -da -da -da. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go to Romans 13 chapter real quick. And those of you who can't stomach somebody showing you what the scriptures say, then I'm so sorry, I, I, because I can't handle ignorance. That, that makes it very difficult to get through life, is dealing with ignorant people. I, I can't handle ignorance. It, it, it's real irritating. 13. I think it's roughly about verse number 6, but be, I mean 1 through 6, but what we're going to do is we're going to read just the, right here. Do you want to be free of fear of authority? Keep doing good, and you will have praise from it. For it is God's minister. You know what a minister is? A minister is a servant for your good. But if you're doing what is bad, be in fear. For it is not without purpose that it bears the sword. It is God's minister, an avenger to express wrath against the one practicing bad. So if you're not doing bad, and according to this scripture... Every person is to be in subjection to the superior authorities. For there is no authority except by God. So he's allowing them. The existing authorities stand in a relative position by God. Therefore, whoever opposes this authority has taken a stand against the arrangement of God. And those who have taken a stand against it will bring judgment on themselves. So when I say to y'all, I am not in any way challenging government. Government serves a purpose. See, for those rulers are an object of fear, not to the good deeds, but to the bad. So they serve a purpose, and it is a valid purpose, and I agree wholeheartedly with that purpose. So to sit up here and claim that I'm supposed to be some sovereign so-called citizen, knock yourselves out. I could care less. For my actions and my beliefs prove different. Now, that's one thing. However, if somebody is doing wrong, the law that's implemented by Congress says that I am to highlight that wrong. That's all I've been doing. It's highlighting the wrongs, ladies and gentlemen. That's what this is about. That's what these individuals did. But they did this. Now, see, back in the 1990s, we didn't have the Internet like we have now. Okay? We did not have, pay attention, the Internet like we do now. By the way, I know that this is what Starks did. Private law is a law which comes into being when people enter into an agreement, created, uh, creating the rules and terms in which they agreed to be bound to. Okay? Starks has a private law. He studied it got it done okay just that simple this document and I haven't gone over this document since 1999 I followed it to the letter when it came to the commercial lien okay followed it to the letter and they literally hated it ignored it because you know what I did not do I did not follow through okay and by the way, the Supreme Court can't get rid of the common law because the people accepted the common law. That's how the government was established. So they can't get rid of the common law. Plus, he, by allowing them to exist in their positions, establishes common law. They cannot get rid of his law. His law is etched in stone. Do you understand where the phrase comes from now? The law is etched in stone. Do you understand where the phrase comes from now? That's how important that law was. Ladies and gentlemen, this document, as well as Thomas Clark Nelson's document, Thomas Clark Nelson has an affidavit. Okay, and I followed this to a letter, to the letter, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to do the same thing. We don't have to write a formal complaint as a pleading. This is called a pleading. They weren't aware of the fact that when you do a pleading, you're submitting to the court's jurisdiction. But pay attention. They speak about rule number three. A complaint is a written statement of essential facts constituting an offense charge. 
it shall be made upon oath before a magistrate. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go and read Federal Rule Number 3. Because all of you should have been filing criminal complaints against the judge from the very beginning. Now, we're going to follow the law. We're going to follow the rules. Many of you are not following the rules. Many of you are not following the law. Let's see if Federal Rule Number 3 still says the same thing. It talks about a you cannot start a criminal process. We're not implementing a process. We're following the rules. It's up to them to do the impaneling of the grand jury and the indictment and the information. It's up to them to do that. Our job is to currently requires, Rule 3 requires a complaint to be sworn before a magistrate judge, which under current Rule 54 would include a state or local judicial official. This is the current law. You have the right to file your complaint. So file your complaint with the court. If the, and there is no fee for criminal complaints. You don't pay a fee, ever. File your complaint. That's why I put it together so that you will comply with the law and the local rules. Must be made under oath before a magistrate or if none is reasonably available before a state or local judicial officer. So you get to file one with the judge. How do you file a criminal complaint? You check. Watch, 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 watch. I'm sorry, I should have showed y'all this yesterday. E-X-P-A-R-T-E H-E-A-R-I-N-G R-E-Q-U-E-S-T Los Angeles S-U-P-E-R-I-O-R-C-O-U-R-T I want ex parte hearing request Los Angeles Superior Court. Good. You correct my spelling. Thank you. Because I, I wasn't even looking. Okay. The official language used in the contents of the Los Angeles Superior Court website is uh, not there. The court cannot consider your request. Uh, declaration regarding notice. Request for waiver of notice of request for emergency order. No, I'm asking for ex parte hearing. Hold on. Los Angeles Superior Court has ordered the supervision of any and all serving an ex parte application request for continuance. No, don't want that. I want the request for ex parte hearing. Request an order of continuing hearing to extend. No. Ah. Emergency ex parte orders. Issues temporary emergency ex parte orders with the item. The court did not issue a temporary emergency ex parte hearing. It is called an emergency ex parte hearing. Temporary emergency order ex parte. So let's, this is divorce. I don't want the divorce form. There is a regular form. Ex parte legal aid foundation uh, blank form is available in our ex parte request for orders. Okay. Do you understand? I'm going to click on this because this is the one I'm looking for. The I know about the ex parte hearings. I've been doing them for years. You especially get to do them in mortgages and foreclosures in California. If the bank has committed fraud against you, then add their names to your complaint and specify that it's the bank specified that because they've introduced something known as the Non-Judicial Foreclosure Act and they're putting the burden on you to file a lawsuit, the expense and the paperwork that they have disenfranchised you by forcing you to go through that. File your complaint with the court. Why? Because now you're grandfathered when you do all the other things. Yes, I was going to put an arbitration clause in your complaint, but I said, nope, 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 not going to do that. Not going to cloud the process. Not going to be adding to the process. Now, I'm looking just for the ex parte motion. And I'm disappointed that they gave me all this other junk. But here's the thing. Here's the motion. It's a simple motion. Okay? It really is a simple motion. It's an ex parte motion. All of you have always had the right to do an ex parte motion to the court. In emergency Temporary emergency orders. Okay? You have the right 
to do an emergency ex parte motion to the court. You have the right to notify them that you are bringing, it's FL300. Okay, this is the phone that I need. I'm going to download this. I'm going to download this. The reason why, uh, and look at it, it says the court will give you a hearing date, so forth. This is for the court to fill out, the court order section. So, I, because this comes with instruction, let's do, let's do that. Copy. Sorry, I was supposed to mention this yesterday and I forgot. I just forgot. I plum forgot. Did you plum forget? Yes, I plum forgot. It didn't apple forget and I didn't pear forget. I plum forgot. Oh, Lord. Sorry. Give me one second, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to save this document, and it's already there, and it's a guide. Oh, it's a guide. I'm going to put this on the very same folder as the criminal complaint information, ladies and gentlemen. So those of you, you will have, to have, to have, you will have a copy. Okay. So you don't have to go searching all over the internet. Now, that's Los Angeles. Okay, now what we going to do, hey, here it is right here. There it is, form 306. No, it's 300. We need 300. Okay, 306, this is a, uh, uh, that's the wrong form. So let's see if we can, I'm going to wait for it to pop up. This is a self-help. This is divorce request. So 306 is for divorce. 300 ain't for divorce. So let's see where your form's at. Where your forms at? Family law, form 300. Request for order. Okay? And because this is the same request I told you yesterday, that it's the same process when you are sitting up there getting a temporary restraining order. You are making an ex parte request to the court. You go there without the other party even knowing you go in there. They cannot hold an actual hearing. They cannot hear any actual evidence because that's ex parte. You deny the other person their due process rights, which is the very same, very, very, very same principle that I've told you all about. When I said that when they go and they get a warrant for a person's arrest, when they get a warrant to search properties, when they go, they have to introduce evidence to the court they have to hold a probable cause hearing. They cannot hold a probable cause hearing without you being present. Presente? Presente. They cannot hold a hearing without you being present. Do not let them tell you that, yes, the statute allows it. Doesn't. Whoo, man. E X P A R. T-E. And the parte, it ain't like, oh, everybody's having a parte. It ain't that type of party. Okay? It's ex parte. Parte. Not ex party. Ex parte. There's a hyphen after the E. Parte. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the California form. Every state has such a request for an order. What you're going to do for your state to find the request for filing your complaint, because remember, child custody, child support, property, visitation, all of these are ex parte requests. This is where you're bringing your complaint to the court. You're bringing it to a magistrate because that's who normally handles these. Okay? Temporary emergency order and you're going to select other watch this uh oh it ain't letting me select it it said you ain't selecting that mother and I'm going to be like specify but it's all the way over here how can I specify let's see watch this come on now uh oh it says you ain't going there neither let me do tab 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 ain't working so I guess I must download it before I start to, there it is right there. So let's watch this. Temporary. Other specify. Uh-oh. That's why I can't do it. Watch this. Other specify. 
other feta pie. Other feta pie. Okay. Other feta pie. And we go C R I M I N A L C O M P L A I N T. Criminal complaint. Okay. See, because I, oh, I can do both. Hoo-wee. Now, remember, you still got to do the cover sheet and all of that. Because every court requires a cover sheet. You're going to put the name of you right here. You, the petitioner, put the date and time will be held. The clerk of the court going to do that for you. You ain't got to do that. Well, actually, if you find out when their ex parte hearings are, because every court has an ex parte hearing schedule, so you have to call the clerk of the court. They will give that to you. Tell them, I need to know what days you do your ex parte hearings. And all you do is you show up at that time. Okay, file this with the court, you attach your complaint to it, but go over the rules, ladies and gentlemen. Don't just go in there and file because somebody did a video saying you must do this and you must do that. Check it out for yourself. Do your research first. Don't do your research last. So many of you are just sitting up here making a lot of mistakes and it's costing you. Many of you are going to jail. Many of you are having cases filed against you. You're having to jump through hoops. Ladies and gentlemen, stop. Stop before you answer. Are you sure? Sorry, that's me having the radio on again. And the problem is, I ain't turned it on. I ain't listened to nothing. That is a shame. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, here's the complaint. It will be up by the time this video is up. So, oh, that's right. I put it on pause because we listen to Prince. He was doing doves being crying and everything and being like mama and papa and, you know, never being satisfied. <laughs> this prince. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey. I am a huge, huge, devoted persona of this young man. Because when I was younger, I did not recognize all of his skills until I was about... 13 years old. Prior to that, 1999, that song was a hype, you know, but it was, I didn't like it because it was like somebody was trying to predict when everything was going to be, what they were going to be. So, but after I grew older, you know, and then 1984 and all that darling Nikki stuff, I, and I couldn't stand him at that point because now you went a little bit too far. I'm a, I'm a child. How are you going to be talking about stupid stuff like that? And the black album? What the? Black? You called it black? What the? Okay. Anyway, enough about Prince. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that this information proves beneficial to all of you. Like I said, I'm going to put the most potent weapon and the criminal complaint request forms and the criminal complaint all in the same folder titled Alleged Criminal Judicial Criminal Complaint. Okay, alleged judicial criminal complaint. Just that simple. Or alleged criminal judicial, no, al criminal, no, alleged judicial criminal complaint. Just, it's, it's the only way I can put it. All right, but it'll be under that folder. Just look for the word alleged, which means it will probably be at the top of the PDF list. Under the A, alleged will be the first word. Got it? Good. Have a good day, everybody. Adios. It will be up about the same time the video is up. Gotta go.